But few took it from college to the pros at guard like Joe DeLamalier did from Michigan State to the Buffalo Bills and to the Cleveland Browns. What's your highlight? My highlight, one of them is what I did with Fred. Fred Siegel is waiting and wondering. Waiting to see whether an old friend of his, Bills Hall of Famer Joe DeLamalur, is going to show up to run a race with him. Now to find out just how Fred and Joe got to this point in time, we have to go back in time. Back to 1980 and here to what used to be UB's Rotary Field. Joe DeLamalur was here that day as a Special Olympics volunteer and Fred Siegel was here to run his first ever race. But once Fred hit the track, well, he was having a tough go of things. This kid, Fred, I don't even know Fred's last name at that point, he wouldn't run. He was like kind of jogging, really kind of struggling through the mile. And all of a sudden this large, large fellow jumps out of the stands and starts running with Fred. I really didn't know who he was. I knew he was a volunteer. And that's what I kept saying. Come on, Fred, you can finish. I'll, I'll never forget it. You'll finish. I never imagined that we'd ever meet again. And although Joe didn't think much of his act of kindness, it sure had an impact on Fred. It was Joe that uh, came out of that stand and really motivated him. Once he found out he was a professional bill, that sold Fred on running. And he just decided that he was going to run. 19-year-old Fred Siegel. And run, Fred did. Just four years later, thanks to his newfound confidence and lots of practice, Fred won the gold medal in the mile at the International Special Olympics. In the years after that, Fred and Joe got on with their lives. Joe finished his career and wound up in the Football Hall of Fame. Thank you very much. And Fred, well, he finished high school and then entered the workforce. Well, the two of them must have really connected because Fred never stopped talking about Joe for 24 years. Then last November, something magical happened. Joe and Fred ran into each other at a fundraiser for the disabled at Ralph Wilson Stadium. And to think that he was running still after all these years, I, I, I'm a real sap. I start crying. I, I, I cry very easily, and I got really emotional about it. And it was at that fundraiser that Fred asked Joe if he'd run with him again, this time at the Heritage Center's annual fun run in the spring. Joe, who lives in North Carolina, told Fred he'd try to make it. And so that's how we found Fred recently, waiting and wondering whether his old friend Joe was going to show up for the race. He was just hoping that Joe would really surprise him. And then coming down this morning, he said, wouldn't it be wonderful if Joe could just fly out of the sky and surprise me? <laughs> hey, Fred, you ready to roll? <laughs> How'd you know that, man? And then a quarter of a century after their first race, it was time for Joe and Fred to run together again. And this time, their roles were reversed. It was Fred helping Joe to finish the race. 25 years later, I encouraged him, so we both help each other out in our career. I just thank God that, you know, for a guy like Fred, I, I, I'm so thankful that I did make a difference in someone's life. Unbelievable. Words just can't explain it. My heart was just filled for Fred to think that something like this could happen to him again. And if he didn't jump out of the stand like he did, I probably wouldn't accomplish what I did in my career, won the race, a lot of races and win the gold medal. Maybe God wanted us to, to, to me to be successful in my career, thanks to Joe. Scott Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, Fred Siegel. And so we go back to when it originally occurred, the, the first Special Olympics. You were asked as your rookie year or second year? No, it was, it was, my rookie year, this was 79. Right. And uh, I always say yes, even when we came here at Kidian, but... Uh, I didn't know what we were doing today. I just said, they said, you want to do something with Fred Siegel? I go, sure, whatever. Yeah. And uh, whatever it is. I didn't know it was going to be like this. But they asked me if I'd be chairman of Special Olympics. And this is 1979. Nobody even knew what it was. And it was October when they asked me. And I believe it was May when we started the, the race. So when the May came, they said, the Bills called and the secretary said, 
you know you're doing that Special Olympics thing. My wife heard me kind of trying to get out of it. And uh, she, I hung up the phone. She goes, you idiot, you are going. When you give your word, you go. And this is really a, a neat thing that they're starting to do in this country because it was 1979. So I went there, and that's when I met. I reluctantly went. And when, after I came home, I was so thankful that, because I saw Special Olympians for the first time and what they do and how much it means to these kids. And I'm one of ten, my wife's one of eight, and we all had all these children. There's not one sp special um, uh, education or, or special needs child in our family. That's a lot of people to be thankful for. And when you can help somebody and you have the opportunity, it's really good. What motivated you in 1979 to jump out of the stands? My mother, even though she had a, a stroke, she'd always tell us, you can always be nice, do something nice. So I, oh, that, that could be something nice. I jumped over and just helped him. And I, I felt bad that he couldn't finish the mile. And uh, you know, I thought if I just encourage him, maybe he'd finish it. And I, I, how long did it take you, Fred? Uh, it, I don't remember the time. It was, it was pretty long. It was pretty long. Because, you know, they, it was a long time, over 20 minutes, I'm sure. Yeah. Then I get a letter four years later, and what was your time in the final, or when you won it? I did six minutes and seven seconds. A mile. <laughs> now, that, now that is an accomplishment. Yes. You can talk about O.J. Simpson and everything, but O.J. had it from when he was a kid, and I had it from when I was a kid. He went from ground zero to the Empire State Building. Right in four years. So Fred, do you recall when that 1979, when all of a sudden this rather significant large person <laughs> starts running beside for you, beside you? Well, I didn't even know who it was so the after the race, so he told me who he was. So maybe it was a blessing he jumped out of the stands when he did. Yeah. Did you guys talk about it on uh, while he was, what, what was he saying to you while you were while well, you were running. He says, don't give up. You can finish the race. And, and, it, and it paid off. Yeah. That's why I listened to him. And when you got done and he introduced himself as a football player, uh, what did that mean to you? Yeah, it was, a, it, was, it was a big accomplishment. It meant somebody important in my life to help me win to, to finish the race. So when you went back home that night, did you look up? A little bit, learn a little bit more about this Joe DeLamalur? No, yeah, I did. I uh, asked my parents about him. They told me all about what he accomplished. I think that was great. Did you follow his career? Yes, I did. I kept on running and went down to the internationals, won the gold medal. Yeah. Did you find, what kind of inspiration did a Joe DeLamalur mean to you, Fred? It meant a lot to me to motivate me to finish that win and keep on training. The, to go to internationals and win the gold medal. If he didn't come in my life, I probably wouldn't accomplish the, the gold, win the gold medal and win all the races I did. So it was a blessing we met when we did. And at some point, well after the, that particular event, you actually meet for the first time in maybe 25 years. That's why we met after 25 years. So it was a blessing so we could run again like we did 25 years ago. But this time, I helped him along the way. <laughs> To finish the race. What did you tell him? I tell him, hey, you told me 25 years ago you can finish race. You, you can finish the race too. <laughs> and know what I was telling Fred? Instead of come on, you can make it. I was going, come on, Fred, slow down. So, <laughs> he did slow down. I did slow down. He did slow down. Too. <laughs> yes. He could have buried me. I could have. <laughs> but I was nice. You were nice. Well, that puts you in the same category, being nice to a, a football Hall of Famer. So that puts you in a special category, Fred. Yes, it does. The <laughs> whole conference here today is the value of a single human being. And I think in both instances where your relationship with Joe and Joe's relationship with you certainly underscores all that. Well, my wife always says, Fred's done a lot more for my, me and our family than we've done for Fred. I really can't thank you enough. And so on behalf of everybody, to, to Fred, to Joe, and to all the folks who have been here, I want to just a hearty thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.